Hey guys, it's Jamie and um, I wanted to show you some um, tricks that I came across when I did my cup and saucer for my class. Um, I adapted this little project from prior teachers at my studio who had a cup and saucer. Um, you know, I just made my saucer a little bit bigger, bigger and a little bit wavier. Um, I use my handmade stamps at the bottom and at the bottom of the, the cup as well, it's on the sides. Um, so after I got done with this project, um, I thought I want to have, you know, a fl more flared um, cup. So I ended up, um, when I went out to coffee once, I saw a cup that I liked and I took the jacket off of it and I thought, oh, I'll use that. Now because I had already engineered this perfect fit here at the bottom, I thought, oh, well, I don't want to mess with my templates for the tray and for the bottom. I'll just modify um, the top. So what I did is I took my original template. Now this is just a plain um, template that I got just from wrapping around a tube like such. And I measured the bottom. And so this is uh, about 10 inches right down here. So that I knew that um, if I wanted to um, create, use this curve, but have the same bottom here that I would have to adapt this. So the way that I attempted that is I just took this template here and I drew it out and then I, I just, because it's a circle, I just kept going with it. And then I knew that I needed to have it to be at least 10 inches. So I'm running out of paper here, but you get the idea. I had a bigger piece. I just did it directly on tar paper. And then I measured to make sure down here that it was actually 10 inches, which is right here. Um, this is a great tool to have. Um, this is uh, in the architectural section at uh, art supply stores. Uh, but you can, uh, it comes all bendy and you just, um, you know, put it into any kind of curved shape that you want. Um, another thing that's helpful in um, doing conversions from existing patterns is something called a shrinkage ruler. So you can either do the calculations or you can buy one of these. Um, so for example, if I wanted to copy this template directly, um, I would have to, I wrote down the dimensions here, it's 10 and a half, this up here, and it's 5.25 here, 6.5 here. So I would have to find those things on here. So if I was gonna do this, 6.5, I would bring it out to here. And then if I was going to go 5.25, I would have to come up to here. And for the distance 10.5, I would have to come out to there. So if we take a look at this, um, Kind of doing it by eye here. You can see the difference here if I wanted to copy this template um, directly. So the thing is, I don't want to copy this one directly. I want to make it unique um, to me. I'm going to borrow some of the aspects of it. I like the size of this, so I'm not going to change the height of it. Um, uh, the only thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to do something that can merge these together. You know, ha still have the flare, um, but you know, not as big. So all I'm going to do, this is the template that I created um, for this guy here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to knock off a couple of inches. So I measured a couple inches up here and then I just folded it. And now I'm ready for, for my new version to come out. Okay, so let me walk you through the creation of this um, little project. 
So I created a template and this is seven inches with rounded corners um, and I've already cut it out and what I'm going to do is um, use a mask on it. So I created this little um, smaller insert and I'm going to put that in the center and then I'm going to put on my first texture. So I wanted to do a little shout out to my friend Janine who turned me on to this texture. It is a placemat from Kohl's department store. The next thing I'm going to do is just to get some rid of some of the rough edges is I'm going to run this piece of cotton around the edges to get off the clay boogers. And the last thing I'm going to do is apply my stamp. So there's my design before I press it. Now the next thing, um, because I changed the bottom of this template, um, of the coffee template, my old bottom isn't going to work. So um, what I had to do is come up with a new measurement. And um, the, the size I came up with is this. It's about three inches. And um, what I'm gonna do now is use these discs to press into the plate for the new size. Now this is something brand new that I'm doing and I really like it because um, when you're doing custom forms, you might not always be able to find a tube or something the size you need. Whereas if you go to Michael's and just get the quarter inch foam, you can, you know, use one of these discs and use another pole or another dowel or something to press in for you. Um, I like creating like six of these so that I can just rest it on a board after I press it and it's the right height for me. So let me um, show you how I created these discs. Here is my um, quarter inch foam from Michaels in this case. Um, I have two sets of cutters. Um, I'm, having, I'm having to use this one here because this was closest to the size I needed. So, um, and they are extremely sharp. <laughs> so, um, I did try the Fat Daddy-O ones, the ones I normally use, and it works too. This one works a little bit better. Um, almost too good. I mean, you can see through here how it kind of cut into this bat. So, just be careful when you're doing this that you have something hard underneath here. So, I am just going to put the cutter on this, and then I'm just going to keep turning it until I hear it break through. guys. Um, so let me show you pressing these. All right, so now I'm going to center disc on here. And the great thing, you don't have to use this whole pile to push. You could just do this. Uh, I'm just going to put it all on at once. The nice thing about using foam is that um, when the clay shrinks, you can it's not going to crack the clay. You can um, it'll kind of get snug in there, but you can reach it in time and just plop it out with a needle tool. So there's my indented form. Now um, the clay I'm using is not this is B mix. And so it's not standing up as well, and that's why I wanted to use the six of the discs here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it on a wear board. And just let it set up for a little bit. All 
First thing I'm going to do is that this is a little bit thick. This is a quarter inch, and I just when I'm you know sipping, I don't want a big thick rim, so I'm just going to use the pony roller to flatten it out a little bit. And I'm also going to take this cloth and soften it. I'm going to create a line so that um, when I'm sipping, I'm sipping against something that's not textured. So I'm taking a chopstick and making that line. This here is going to be a little bit of a problem because I have um, measured um, an exact circle, so I'm just going to make sure that this seam is a little bit pushed in here. Not pushed in, but carved away a little bit. This is the cutter I use to make the uh, foamies. Now the deal is, um, what I should have done is created another a new template, and I hadn't done that yet, I just did it ad hoc, um, that would be a half inch smaller than this uh, three inch deal here, just so that I would have didn't have to uh, do the ad hoc bottom that you saw me do. But since this is brand new, uh, that's on my to-do list. If I like this, I guess, then I will do it. The final step is to put the handle on, so I'm going to prepare for that. The first thing I'm going to do is roll out a um, coil, large coil. Uh, the only difference here is that I want to have it like a carrot shape. I'm probably going to need at least six or seven inches of this um, shape. So I now have the carrot shape and I'm just going to plop it down to create a flat bottom. And then I'm going to use the pony roller to create an angle. And now you can see it comes to like a triangle shape. Wise. And then now I'm going to press in with a board make some um, additional lines like I have here. All right, so you can see those lines, and then I'm just going to bend this into the handle. It's a little bit wide, but um, I'm going to go with it. So I'm going to be placing the handle um, 
at the point where I joined and then also in the center. So before I do that, I'm going to just let these um, set up a bit. Um, and um, in the meanwhile, I'm going to create the little appliques that I add after um, the handles attached. So I'm talking about these little pieces here. Oh, I think I put a third one on this one. Yeah. So I'm taking just a small piece of clay here and rolling it out pretty thin, maybe an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to just stamp away, creating an extra one just in case. So these little leaves I'd like to keep pliable, so I'm going to put them under plastic and then when these have set up a little bit longer, I'll do the attaching. So um, that's it for now. Um, I mainly wanted to show you my thought process of you know modif modifying templates and then also um, you know how to go about doing that, plus um, my foam. The foam is great. I love it. Anyway. Um, Good luck out there and uh, happy clay making.